rhymes in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Strap my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? The hell we gonna- Okay guys, so we're back again with the Mini With the W11 engine and today we're gonna be speaking to you about the top 10 things That will break or will fail after 100k so i'm going to show you all the things you need to be changing you probably would have seen my reliability video but majority of them things are the same so i'm just going to go over the top 10 things that will break over 100k on these cars that you need to be aware of and that's why they say it's a big service for 100k on the w11 engines that must be done to keep these cars running in tip top order so the first one guys is going to be the crankshaft pulley and obviously as you know the seal leaking oil now that must be addressed they usually start weeping way before even 100k around 50k but it's not too bad but if you don't get it sort of 100k it will probably chuck oil everywhere and you do not want that because obviously if that happens it's going to cause a lot of problems for your belt in the long run and the pulley itself so you're going to want to rectify that issue immediately the next one is going to be the supercharger oil now i tell everyone a lot make sure you change that supercharger oil on this supercharger people say oh, i don't need to be changed if you go to bmw and ask for it to be changed they will not change it trust me guys do not go to bmw asking to change your bmw mini because they will not change the oil for you they don't believe it should be changed and you trust me i've seen many times when the superchargers come off on these that the oil has been very very low so make sure you get that changed in time before the service is due the next one is going to be your valve cover gasket now these this one don't seem to be leaking, but to be fair, I'm gonna change it anyway, just to be on a safe hand, because I want it changed to be safe then. Sorry, as you'll see here, you've got your breather lines as well. If they come off, make sure you change them as well. You're just gonna to wanna to change everything that's gonna be coming off this engine, like I'm gonna be doing. As I said to you guys, my videos will be there, so you can relate to them videos after as well. The next one, guys, is the oil filter housing gasket and the seal. Um, the seals on the oil and the cooler, they need to be changed. It sits around the back here. It is quite hard to get to. It's not as easy as on the BM, but it is a doable job and you can do it with a bit of patience and perseverance. You can get the oil foot housing gasket off and replace all the gaskets and the ones on the oil in the cooler. If you're not aware, they run little woe rings on them. When you take that off, before you take the gasket off, they sit on there, so you need to change them as well. It's all something that will start leaking before 100K. BMW's gaskets on these oil foot housings are known to leak. Me coming from BMW, I know how them oil foot housing gaskets leak, and trust me, you don't want that. It's a big mess. They're not good these gaskets at all um bmw have revised them now so you can get a stronger one which doesn't leak anymore so it's a good thing and they do leak before 100k if it's on the original one that needs to be changed so i have got a new one which we're going to be changing okay so the next one we're going to talk about is the sump pan gasket leaking now the sump pan gasket will sit underneath the engine as you know sits at the bottom now bmw are not known for their gaskets any shape or form as many of you guys know they leak but again on the w11 engine it's very easy to change it's nothing like the bmw engines this is a mini so it's very easy to change over if you do have it leaking just change it over and get over and done with the engine is very tiny you can just probably pull the whole engine out if you feel to and overhaul everything while you're in there so if you fancy doing that just make sure you can go ahead and do that but the sump gaskets do leak just it's the way bmw intended them to be I don't know why, I've never understood why, it's just the same on all BMWs. The next one guys is, on these is easy corrosion on the body. Now these cars, they like to rust. They like to rust a lot, mostly, mostly underneath the body itself. They like to rust everywhere. And that's why a lot of people end up doing stainless steel exhaust because the exhaust on these like to corrode they like to corrode and that's why people put a stainless steel exhaust system on them that's why when you go to buy your mini do not be surprised because i know a lot of old people like to drive these things do not be surprised if it's got a performance exhaust on it the reason majority of them have a performance exhaust is because they corrode underneath so people put a lifetime stainless steel one on so it doesn't happen again but you guys still got to be aware of the suspension arms underneath that they corrode the joints the bushes everything on them does corrode on them so be aware of that water pump and thermostat failure next so 
as you guys know the water pump as i spoke to in my previous video connects to the supercharger and it's run on a fan which in turn it uses the supercharger the supercharger spinning the compressed air from the supercharger to blow the fan on the on the water pump for the coolant to go around the engine now that can fail as well near 100k and so can the thermostat so it's better to just change it as i've said to you the thermostat housing you don't have to change that you just have to change the thermostat it just depends on if it's overheated if it has it would be cracked so you'll need to change the housing as well which is not expensive this car is very very cheap this is all stuff that needs to be replaced at 100k and it's all stuff that i'm doing before 100k which is the cars on 98k but we need to get this done immediately um to make this car reliable so that's what we're going to be doing next one is the supercharger failing now if you hear a grinding noise in the engine bay when you come to buy this car the first thing you can assume is that possibly the supercharger has been run low on oil from people extremely boosting this car and from the heat that um it's on its way to failure now i've been looking at superchargers for these in case there was a case of this one failing they're not that expensive to be fair maybe that's just for me i don't know because of what i do uh they're about run you about 400 pounds so if i need to replace the supercharger it's something i will do anyway um like i say every video i do helps me and it helps you guys as well so realistically i don't lose out of it um for me it's not a big expense and i don't mind having to replace the supercharger if it's gone who knows what's going to happen on this car i need to check it when it comes off but here's a common problem that you guys need to be aware of the next one guys is going to be the bypass valve sticking and causing lack of boost now it's a common problem it sits right down here the bypass valve now it's something that you guys need to be aware of that when i take off everything i'm going to be showing you that i have got a new one of them coming as well with the kit with the supercharger oil to redo that as well because i don't want that sticking i've had people telling me put a dump valve on this do this but i don't really want to go down that level of doing all them kind of things i'm not into really badly modifying the cars yes i'm doing a pulley it's because i want to do a video on the test drive after the before and after to show you guys how it drives before and after now obviously the power difference i've heard it is meant to be quite powerful so in that sense i want to make sure we do this pulley and we see how much power it produces but obviously i need to do the intercooler i need to be safe i'm not going to run like a lot of people on a standard intercooler in this car and risk it there's no point taking that risk i'd rather do it all right the first time the money is not an issue so why am i going to skimp out i'm not going to be like some people a lot of people do skimp out because they don't see it's worth it or don't want to put the money but it's not really an issue for me so i'm just going to do the intercooler anyway the next one on these guys is going to be the head gaskets and again i spoke to you about this in the reliability video Head gasket failure is usually because people are remapping them and putting too much boost, too much pressure in the engine internals, and the internals on this cannot handle it. This is why there's a lot of companies, and even me myself, you can take out this engine and rebuild the internals yourself for next to nothing, and then put all that boost into the car. You can even upgrade the alternator pulley by a 5% pulley. You can upgrade the crankshaft pulley. You can do a lot on this car. But in the long term, is it worth it? No, it's not worth it to do it on a standard engine. You'll be better off to do it on an engine that you know has been overhauled with stronger internals and a lot bigger, which can handle the pressure of the new of the new power of the engine, of the new parts. As you guys know, you can upgrade a lot on this car. These cars are very, very tunable and there's a lot of parts on the market for them. And the parts ain't expensive, but it's the damage it's gonna to cause to the engine long term. That's why I would advise you if this car has been messed with any anyway, leave it when you go to see it and like i said i don't know if the supercharger pulley's already been changed it might have been who knows this isn't a jcw one because you guys know it'd have the jcw on there it also have the, the s on the intercooler case in itself which it doesn't so we know this one ain't a jcw so but for all i know it could have been changed it might not but in that sense i bought the pulley if i don't need it well it will sit on the shelf and stay there so guys i hope you've enjoyed this video this has been the top 10 things that will go wrong on a 100k mini cooper s r53 with a w11 engine i hope you guys have enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching if you are new to the channel and you've just come across this video please do go ahead and subscribe um, because there's going to be a lot of videos regarding this car the reason i've done these videos now is because i want a lot of people to be aware that i am going to be fixing this car i didn't want to have the repairs up and then do the videos it doesn't make sense it's better to do them now so i can remember how each part is what each part is I'm replacing and how much they were and pull it out for you guys to see. So thank you all for watching. If you're on this channel, hello and welcome. I am the BMW Doctor here. I was doing BMW, but now I'm going to be doing Mini for you guys. This is BMW Dr. Dean here. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.